Hello, thank you for joining me. That's a dustbin, and I'm on a dusty bin. I'm on a class 321. The reason these trains are known as class 321 is because I'm not going to try and do it because I always end up sticking the middle finger up, but because of the game show 321, where Ted Rogers, someone used to go 321, and um, the booby prize was a dusty bin. So these trains have always been known as dusty bins. Today we're going to South End, Victoria, and when we get to South End, Victoria, we're going to walk along to the seafront and we're going to go and enjoy a trip on the South End Pier Railway because I want to see the trains they've got before they get replaced. So, soon going to be arriving at South End. Let's go and find the Pier Railway. So, we've arrived at South End, Victoria. There's the dusty bin we came on. I was actually sitting in the unit in front of that one. That one's a refurbished unit. I was in an unrefurbished unit. So we came from that way. That's looking towards London. There's the old signal box. And here are the trains that are replacing them. This is a class 720. So there's um, 720 sitting here. These have, do they have five carriages? Yeah, they have five carriages. They're built by Bombardier in Derby. So um, three to ones are four carriages. These are five carriages. Um, so here we have 720. We've got number 538 and 537. So I, um, I came here today because I want to do the pier trains before they get replaced, but I also wanted to do the three two ones before these take over completely. Now, if you're wondering what that growling sound you can hear, there's something very, very exciting sitting here in platform four. We've got a class 37 it's doing the, um, the leaf clearing trains. So I was really quite delighted when, when we arrived at the station and I saw that sitting here. So this is 37425. I'll just go around here past this advertising hoarding. Um, see, it's in a regional railway delivery. So that, this is the livery that existed in the 90s when they were local of all trains. This one is called Concrete Bob. So that was um, Bill McAlpine, he was known as Concrete Bob. There we have 37425 growling away. And these unusual looking wagons here, these are the leaf clearing wagons. So um, in there is the, the water which um, is pushed onto the track with a high pressure jet, and then that's how they um, blast the leaves off the railway. And then sitting here on the other end is 37422. So this train has to go up and down a lot of lines that would rarely see loco hall trains. So seeing a loco hall train here is pretty unique. So it'll be going up to Clacton, it'll go to Walton on the Nays, possibly to Southminster, all over the East Anglian region really. And look at that. I've never seen quite such a juxtaposition of old and new. You've got the vintage class 37 and the brand new class 720. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to go on out the station and walk down to the seafront to find the South End Pier Railway. I've walked on through South End Town Centre, come out to this bridge which has a lift to take down to the sea. Now it's going to be windy. So I'm just going to try and shout and show you what I can show you. That's looking up towards London. There's the roller coasters of the theme park, which isn't open today. And there is the South End Pier, which is what we've come here to see. So what we're going to do, we could go down in the lift. We might do that, but what I think I'll probably do is walk along towards London. There is a funicular railway. I'm not sure if it's running today, but perhaps we'll go and see that first. If it isn't running, we can have a look at it. Oh, it's getting windy again. Is. See where that crane and that construction site is. So I'm going to walk along the top, along to the funicular railway, and then I'll probably come along. It's quite a long way down there. Um, I might come back up in the lift later, but our main destination is right out there in the Thames Estuary at the end of South End Pier. I've just come along the cliff top a bit from the pier, so what we're going to do once we get down the bottom, we're going to walk along back to the pier. The reason I've taken you this way is because, as I said, I wanted to show you the funicular railway, which is 
just here. Now, unfortunately, it's not running today. It's also known as the cliff lift. You can see it's carriage. So what we'll do, we'll walk down these steps there and we'll have a look at it as we go. So this funicular railway opened on the August Bank holiday in 1912. Its um, gauge is four foot six inches, so very slightly narrower than um, the British railway gauge of four foot eight and a half inches. But inside, there's a counterbalancing track, which is 21 inches. So if you look up there, there is the funicular carriage. Now what I'm thinking we might be able to do, if we go underneath it here, the path runs underneath, so if we stand here, I don't know how easy it is to show you, but basically there is the smaller track, the 21 inch gauge track, which carries the counterweight, and then the carriage itself runs on top of that. So there's the funicular carriage, so that would take us down there. So it's a bit of a shame it's not running today, but um, good reason to come back. Of course, we will be coming back to South End in the next year or two for two reasons. One. The trains they're currently using on the pier railway are due to be replaced. We'll talk more about trains when we get there. The other reason I would like to come back here is there is a railway museum there which has all the former trains or some of the former trains of the pier railway but due to the coronavirus it is closed at the moment which is understandable but it's not the end of the world. We can come back and we can do that museum in the future and hopefully we'll come back on the day when the funicular railway is running. So we will come back to do the new trains when they're running. From here we get a better view, you can see up the funicular railway. So the other track I said about is actually inside, you can't really see it from here. So when the passengers get to the bottom they would go out through that door there and um, probably come down these steps onto the promenade. So I'm going to now walk along there and um, go and find the pier railway. Yeah, but I'll give you another look up at the cliff railway. So I've just come along the promenade from the cliff railway. The pier is just here behind this fence. Here is the theme park with all its roller coasters and Ferris wheels and bumper cars, etc. So this pier, it's the longest pleasure pier in the world. It first, or the first pier opened here in around 1830. It's been gradually extended. It's now about seven, just over 7,000 feet long, 2,000 metres long, so probably about a mile long. Um, it obviously takes us right out into the sea. So if we look, um, I'm just going to show you over the fence before I put my mask on and go in. You can see that's where we're going to get on the train in that building and we're literally going to go out to sea on a train. I've just bought my ticket for a ride on the South End Pier Railway. What I'm going to do, I'm going to ride one way and walk the other. They have got two trains, but it looks like the other one, Sir John Betjeman, which is just here, isn't out today. So, as I've got no chance of um, riding both trains, I'll ride one and I'll walk back and be able to see the railway as we go. Had they both been out, I would have bought the return ticket and I'd have gone out on one and come back on the other. So I've just got to wait for the train to arrive. We'll pull in on this platform here and then um, we'll board and we'll have a ride out to sea on a train. So here we are, we're on the platforms, two trains, this one's not out today, this one's Sir John Betjeman. We're going on Sir William Haygate, so we go down to the end of the platforms, you can see they are loco all trains, so this loco is Sir John Betjeman, this loco is Sir William Haygate, so these were built in 1986 by Seven Lamb and they're due to be replaced by new trains, which I believe are going to be built by Seven Lamb. There must be a track there, it goes into a depot, if you look that way, so if we got to go on that train, we'd have a ride on that track. We're going to be going down there and then we'll go out onto the pier, out to sea. They're a bit like um, miniature HSTs except there's only a power car 
at one end, but I think they're really cool. So I think it's a shame in a way they're being replaced, but they're workhorses, they've worked so hard all their life that, you know, retirement is due. I'd like to think they preserve some. There is, as I said, there is a museum, it's not open at the moment, so probably maybe one of the locos and carriages will end up in there. So we'll come back and do the museum in the future, but right now I'm looking forward to um, a loco hall trip out to out to sea. And the track, by the way, is three foot, so same gauge as the Isle of Man and quite a lot of the narrow gauge railways in the Republic of Ireland. So here we are inside the carriage. Um, so the seats you sit facing in when you walk in. You've got your little vestibule area here, and there's a compartment there, and then there's another compartment here. Um, I think we're going to go soon. So. It's a bit tunnel-like, although we're not actually in a tunnel, we're actually above, we're on like a viaduct. When we walk back, we'll be walking above us. So, just as we leave, there's Sir John Benjamin. So, yeah, there's the other track. So, um, I'd like to one day have a, come and have a ride on that track as well, so I can say I've done both of them. If we look out here, yeah, you can just see the roller coaster at Adventure Island, one that goes upside down about three times. And we're coming out now, out there's these big doors. Oh, there's another loco there. That's interesting. 1835. Well, I didn't expect to see that. We're just starting to go out. The tide seems to come in now. We're just going out. So that's where we're going to walk back on. Now we're going on to the single track. So when we come back, we'll be up there. So if we look out on this side, you get a fairly good view out, just out along the South Bend, towards Shubrinis. So um, I'm going to now enjoy the ride out to, um, out to sea and I'll show you what there is to see when we get to the other end. down the end of the pier we just saw the train go I'm just going to show you the railway station so it's a single track that's the end station I'll just them um, so you can see see that girder there it was one to two tracks all the way along there is a passing loop halfway along so on the busier days they can run two trains there's the lever so they can have um, two trains to each platform you can see though it is padlocked for trains to use it's just this platform so we walk along here that's looking towards London. You can see Kent over there, that looks out to sea. Over there, Shubriness. There's always a bit of a debate though as to what is the end of the River Thames. Now, some people say it's, um, well, if it's South End on Sea, then technically this is the sea, but other people say it's Shubriness in um, Essex, which is just over there, and Sheerness on the Isle of Sheppey in Kent. That's another um, said, you know, end of the Thames. So it's a bit of a debate. So. In a way, we could be South End on Thames, but um, you know, it, it feels like we're on the sea, we're on a pier. So, yes, it's South End on Sea. So, here's the station. This is where you come and wait for your train to take you back the other way. Um, we're, we're now going to have a look around, see what there is at the end of the pier, and then um, we're not going to go back on the train. We're going to walk back, um, and then we can have a look at the passing loop halfway along. So, here is the pier. So, if you were to um, get a train back what you do you walk up this ramp you get to that gate and then um, go through and get on the train so let's just see what what there is to see here um because i've never been down here before so this is all new to me as i show you so i mean this we are we have come here out of season a few little beach huts maybe they sell ice creams and stuff but this is funny i just noticed here that we have a 
be our double arrow sign saying South End Pier Station. So that's quite amusing, even though the station is actually just over there. And we'll just walk right down to the very end, see what else we can see. Um, so there's a lifeboat right down the end. We'll go see that one. I've never been this far out to see, not on the boat, because this is the longest pier there is. So um, the train ride must be around a mile long. Um, and yeah, it was a very, very different railway to what I've been on before. Never been on any railway quite like that. Um, I have seen, um, if you have a look at this video now, me at Blackpool, I've shown you the disused uh, tram lines in Blackpool here, but that wasn't. Of course, some people think I'm up here to go fishing. Um, obviously it's a very good place to fish, being right above the water. So when we get round to here, we've pretty much come to, well, the end. It's, uh, it's quite big though. It's, um, it's a funny pier and it's very long and thin. And then you've got this really big area at the end. Um, and then that's the lifeboat station. So we'll keep going. We'll have a look up there. And then I'm going to walk back, back to land. Very long, straight walk. Hopefully we'll see a train as we go along. There's a crazy golf. Must be the only crazy golf we've ever seen in the sea. So what does it say? It says visit a lifeboat. That looks interesting. Um, as I say, I'm not entirely sure if we can. But it looks like we might be able to go up onto this balcony and see the view. So we'll certainly do that. So we're just going to go up these steps. videos on boats before um, when we went up to Orkney that was quite a completely different way of seeing the water um, so what I'm going to do I'm going to leave this part of the video here and then I am going to begin my walk back back to land right the way down there now before we head back to land I'm now directly below where I was a moment ago. I thought we'd come and have a look at the lifeboats. So I've got one here and there's another one there now. I really don't know too much about lifeboats other than, you know, fairly self-explanatory. They go out to sea and save lives to those who are in trouble. Um, it is a charity, so this is where the lifeboats for the South End area are based. And it is quite nice, you can come and see them. Um, I'll just show you, there's a model here. A moment ago we were up there. We've now come down, we're now inside, sorry, can't see it. We were up there, we've now come down, and we're inside here, and then the rest of the pier is over here, but it's not on the model. So once we get back outside, we'll, we'll start walking back to land. Well, I'm now walking back to land. It really feels a bit strange walking along here, because it just feels like you walk and walk and walk. And it's further away than it looks. It's all, if you think you're nearly there, but you're not. It's kind of an kind of interesting thing. About, at what is, I think it's about halfway. But this structure here now, I don't actually know. I'm going to take a guess. And if anyone wants to comment and confirm, then please do so. You can see it's a structure over the whole pier. And there's these pulleys. I think it's for lifting girders off ships to replace. Um, the rusty girders on the pier itself. So they lift them up and then possibly transport them along here. And um, if you have a look just there, you can see that girder there looks new. So I think that's what that structure's for. But if you want to comment and confirm, I'll be very pleased to hear from you. Now this is the halfway point now. See there's a passing move, not in use today. There's also some signals. Motor, a big blue um, black box. 
backwards. So the train would come along, it would wait, the train would come around the this side, wait here, and the train would come, would come the other way. Or if the train travelling out to sea arrived in the loop first, it would pull into the second track. You can see there's a signal there, so it would wait for the train to come onto the passing loop, and then that would clear the signal and both trains could be on their way. So I've now got, well, I've got a while of just walking, 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 coming back to land. I can see the train coming, so I'll watch the train go by, and then we'll keep going. Well here we are, we're almost back on land, but as you can see, we're not quite, we are still over the sea. There's the railway line there, you can see the two tracks, so the station we got on the train is down below us here. The museum I said about is under the pier somewhere, um, under the pier here, but as I said it's not open, but we'll come back in the future and do that. So there we have the view looking out to sea, it is it's the longest pier in the world, um, it's also the longest in England, the second longest is Southport, which did have a tramway but unfortunately that closed. Um, another one of the longest piers I've been on that has a railway is Ride on the Isle of Wight. The underground trains go right out onto the pier. I hear the train coming back now. Interestingly this used to be electric and now it's diesel. The trains they have before were more tram-like trains, then they have more metro-like trains and now they've got the current seven lamb diesel trains which are also due to be replaced. So what I'm going to do um, I'm going to finish the video here. I'm perhaps going to go for a walk along the seafront. Um, thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe, comment, and uh, from South End Pier, goodbye.